Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Dylan Holloway. First tonight, an Easton woman is facing charges in connection with the death of a one-year-old child. Maine State Police spokesperson Shannon Moss says troopers were called to 311 Center Road in Easton on March 19th for an unresponsive child. The boy was taken to a local hospital where he was pronounced dead. The medical examiner's office in Augusta performed an autopsy and ruled the death a homicide. The Aroostook County Grand Jury indicted 28-year-old Mariah Dobbins for manslaughter on July 14th. She was arrested at her home and taken to jail on July 16th. Her bail has been set at $10,000 cash. Dobbins is scheduled to be back in court in September. Well, the Androscoggin County Sheriff's Office has issued a silver alert for Livermore Falls teenager. 16-year-old Asia Brown was last seen Saturday, July 30th at approximately 8.30 p.m. at her home on Campground Road in Livermore Falls. Asia's father discovered her missing this morning when he woke up at around 6.30 a.m. Asia has high-functioning autism and requires medication. She is a white female, 5 foot 4 inches tall, 140 pounds with blonde hair and blue eyes. Her clothing and direction of travel is unknown. Anyone who sees Asia Brown or has information should call 911 or the Androscoggin County Sheriff's Office at 753-2599. State police continue their investigation into a stabbing in Winterport. A spokesperson says a male juvenile was stabbed just after 8.30 Thursday night. The state police and the Waldo County Sheriff's Office responded to the scene. He was taken to a local hospital. The spokesperson says his injuries are not life-threatening. A man previously convicted of sexually assaulting a minor appeared in court Friday for his second trial after his conviction for suppressing evidence in his case was overturned. Matthew Jaronczyk has the details. Eric Barr appeared in Kennebec County Superior Court Friday morning. The Sydney man was arrested in 2012 and charged with assaulting and videotaping attacks on a four-year-old child he was babysitting. Prior to the court proceeding, both lawyers met behind closed doors with Justice Daniel Billings. On Friday, he pled guilty to 21 counts of sexual assault and exploitation of a minor. The defendant's lawyer is adding an insanity defense. Mr. Bard intends to add a plea of not guilty by reason of insanity to his, form, his previously entered not guilty plea. The attempt was successful, allowing Bard to get checked out by a psychologist. Uh, as a result of the NCR plea, the court will enter an order for evaluation um, uh, and uh, get that to the forensic service. Mr. Bard was then read his charges in the potential sentencing of each before being escorted out of the room. Defense attorney John Pelletier and assistant state attorney general Paul Rusha both declined to speak on the matter. The court will schedule a trial for Mr. Bard in early January. Reporting from Augusta, Matthew Jaronczyk, ABC7 and Fox 22. Firefighters were called to a home in Bangor for a garage fire earlier today. Bangor Fire Department headed to 140 Fern Street just after 1.30 this afternoon to assist the resident and put the fire out. Assistant Fire Chief Chandler Corvo says if his crew did not arrive shortly after they received the 911 call, the home would have caught on fire as well. Corvo says no vehicles were inside the garage at the time. It appears most of the damage is going to be to the attic space above the garage. Um, we were able to try to salvage some stuff. We put some tarps down inside the garage, try to prevent some water damage, and try for the homeowner to salvage what he can. The cause of the fire is currently under investigation. Planned Parenthood in Maine says it continues to see people driving from places where abortions are banned all the way to Maine for services. Planned Parenthood of Northern New England also says it's seeing more people looking for long-acting contraceptives like IUDs that can last for up to 15 years. Even before the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, Planned Parenthood says it saw the decision coming and planned for the fallout. We anticipated the Dobbs decision and started working on our abortion program about a year ago to make sure that, you know, we were doing all we could to meet the needs of both people living in our state and then people who might be traveling here. Planned Parenthood says requests for vasectomies has also risen, up 58% in the last two weeks. The service is only available at the location in Burlington, Vermont. Folks in East Benton got to enjoy some bluegrass music today as the Fiddle Festival celebrated its 50th anniversary. Our Stephanie Wittenbach has the details. 
Fiddlers from Kennebec County gave folks a show Sunday morning with bluegrass music, a genre that dates back to World War II. Rose McManus says her family started the well-known festival in the early 70s. She says her parents would be glad to know it's still going on. We struggle and argue and spit and spat half the year, and then when the time comes, about two weeks before, everybody kind of drops everything and gets together and tries to get it done. One performer says this year will be his 48th. Yeah, a lot of people come back every year in a tent out. And it's some people structure their vacations around it. And I suppose I've done the same thing. McManus says families can relax knowing the Benton Fiddle Festival is a place for them. But honestly, I think people need to get out and hear something different. It's it's not rap, it's not a lot of different music, it's pretty down to earth. Thompson says generations stay and are a part of the festival and he says he will do the same. My cousin Roger says, hey Dan, you ought to come over to the house, we're going to have a party on Sunday. And it was a crowded packed party up here by the old blacksmith shop. The next year, they had so many people that had closed the road off, so they had to move down here. Several hundred people came to this year's event, pitched a tent, and enjoyed the show. McManus says Benton's Fiddle Festival is the last Sunday in July each year, and this year they celebrated the 50th. The McManus family invites everyone to come out and enjoy this down-to-earth music that you can't find anywhere else. In Benton, I'm Stephanie Wittenbach reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22. All right, thanks for that, Stephanie. Looked like that was a fun time there. We're going to turn things over to Chase Ropenak, who's in now with the first look at our forecast. Chase? Thank you, Dylan. We have some warm temperatures out there today. In Bangor, we're sitting at 84. Pretty hot out there and a little cooler down by the coastline, 82 in Bar, uh, Bar Harbor and 81 in Rockland. Other than that, a very gorgeous day to be out, uh, out and about in the outdoors. So make sure you get out there and experience some fun times outdoors. Looking at the radar right now, there's nothing really coming through. We have some increased cloud cover coming in from the southwest. Other than that, no rain or precipitation on the way. As we look into tomorrow, though, there is some, looks like it'll be a little drizzle passing through. Maybe some Virga that's getting caught by the radar. Other than that, shouldn't be much tomorrow to worry about. As we go into our overnight planner, we can see that we're in the upper to mid-60s throughout the night with some cloudy skies and some calm winds. Dylan? All righty, thanks, Chase. Still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, staffing shortages are concerning school districts across the state as the upcoming school year approaches. And a local electrical workers union is offering programs to help attract new electricians to the workforce. Those stories and more local news when we return. Many states have a tax-free weekend. Well, we thought you should save, too. Right now, get 15% off everything or get up to 60 months no interest. Experience the difference at Jordan's. I'm 82 years old and I have collapsed arches, which means the first thing that hits the ground is the bone in my, my arch. I came to Comfort Choose four years ago because I couldn't walk without pain. And she spent so much time on my feet getting the right shoe and we finally found the right pair. Once you made these orthotics for me, I have no pain. These are so comfortable. I have no discomfort. I feel like I could go running. And I thank you and Comfort Shoes for that. Do you struggle to open or close your windows? Are they drafty or leaky? Are you constantly adjusting your thermostat only to have your energy bill skyrocket? If you're nodding your head yes, Renewal by Anderson is your best solution. They custom build and install weather tight replacement windows and back them with a generous, fully transferable limited warranty. Call now to schedule your free design consultation. Plus, take advantage of this limited time offer with incredible savings and attractive financing. Don't miss out. Call Renewal by Anderson today. Hammond Lumber is the country's largest stocking dealer of Shoremaster products. You don't have to wait to get the dock system you want when you choose Shoremaster from Hammond Lumber Company. Something exciting is happening at Otelco. We've been talking about our investment in fiber internet a lot lately. $33 million invested, 455 miles of fiber to 43,000 main homes. Now we have even more good news. We're joining together with GoNet Speed and taking our mission to expand fiber to a whole new level. It's the fastest possible internet and this is just the beginning. Visit otelco.com slash good news to learn more. 
Jesse Nash hosts the new music game show where you guess the lyrics or it's <laughs> bye bye bye. You are killing it. Don't forget the lyrics. All new Monday on Fox. Find half off deals today and save money by going to foxbangor.com. Hi, I'm Joe Cortez. Coming up on Good Morning Maine, we're going to see a high of 88 or 90 degrees today. It's going to be a beautiful start to our week. Plus, August has arrived, so we'll see what's happening this month around our local area. And Devin Biggs will have your full weather forecast along with sports and Mr. Food. We'll see you soon. Welcome back to the show, everyone. The director of the National Park Service stopped by Acadia National Park Friday to make a big announcement. Our Peter Dubois has that story. National parks have been on the forefront of climate change since the beginning. National Park Service Director Chuck Sams visited Acadia National Park on Friday to celebrate the announcement of a new federally funded restoration project. The goal of the project is to restore the health and function of the Great Meadow Wetland Ecosystem and better protect it from climate change. This is a great example of climate resiliency and climate adaptation and bringing back ecosystem function into the wetlands. The half a million dollar project is funded by the bipartisan infrastructure law. According to Vegetation Program Manager Jesse Wheeler, the project's climate smart approach aims to increase biodiversity, habitat and visitor experience. Putting in boardwalks and culverts to allow more natural water flow. We're also going to be removing invasive plants We'll also be planting native plants that are adapted for a future climate. Sams says these kinds of restoration efforts wouldn't be possible without volunteer organizations such as Friends of Acadia. It's without these types of public-private partnerships, we wouldn't be able to do nearly everything we need to do to be the good stewards that we want to be and that we're charged to be under the Organic Act of 1916. Friends of Acadia Conservation Director Stephanie Clement encouraged anyone interested in helping preserve the park to get involved. Members of the public absolutely can do can help um, with work here at the park. We have volunteer service groups that go out into the park and occasionally they do help with invasive plant species removal. To learn more about the Great Meadow Wetland or to become a volunteer, visit friendsofacadia.org. Reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22, I'm Peter Dubois. All right, thanks for that, Peter. Governor Janet Mills sent a letter to federal officials for increased funding and expanded eligibility for its low-income heating assistance program, better known as LIHEAP. She says it would help ensure Maine residents will stay warm in their homes. The state is expecting to receive $38 million in LIHEAP funds this winter, getting $55 million last year through the American Rescue Plan Act. Maine's Energy Department Director Dan Burgess says the funding is very crucial. Really is, is helping... Uh, um Maine people in a time of need pay for heating costs. According to Burgess, Maine is the most heating oil dependent state in the country as 60% of homes rely on oil. Ready or not, school starts up in a month and district leaders are now bracing for staffing challenges with districts across Maine planning for worst case scenarios involving COVID-19. Mel Meyer explains how it could put pressure on staff and families. Nutrition workers, bus drivers, education technicians to support in the classroom. The superintendent of MSA D15, which serves Gray and New Gloucester, Craig King is hiring for a whole list of positions. There are 27 spots the district really needs to fill before school begins. It's really affected our transportation services. Some jobs are harder to fill because they require specialized training, like language teachers. So you have multiple school districts chasing the same two or three people that are qualified. About a week ago, Lewiston Public Schools was looking to hire for nearly 100 different positions district-wide, which is pretty typical. The superintendent says they've started the school year without being fully staffed as long as he can remember. It's been a challenge the last several years to hire, be at full capacity, uh, with, the, with the labor market like it is. But the staffing shortage in education is only expected to get worse. One study found the number of education degrees awarded annually peaked 50 years ago. The pipeline, if you will, of students going to college post-secondary for education uh, is a shrinking number. Both districts are trying to find ways to attract and retain those who are going into this field. We're exploring some subsidized housing. We're exploring um, 
teacher development programs in district. And King says they're working with Southern Maine Community College on an internship program this year. Those kinds of creative programs are really going to help the situation. I think that's something we can all agree on. We always need teachers, right? Well, something else we also need is electricians. A local electrical workers union is offering programs to help attract new electricians to the workforce. On Friday, we stopped by the training center to learn more. The Electrical Training Alliance Central Maine Apprenticeship Center is committed to training the electricians of the future. The center, located in a former Newport Elementary School, has multiple opportunities available for those interested in learning the trade. Nicholas Paquette of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Local 1253 says the apprenticeship program is a great way to earn your license in Maine. He says apprentices in the tuition-free program take classes at night and work on job sites during the day. So they get their on-the-job training during the day uh, with our signatory contractors. Um, and not only do they uh, have good wages, I mean, they have benefits as well. Paquette says raises are based on hours put into the program, giving incentive to individuals who show initiative. Through a grant, the center is also starting a new pre-apprenticeship program for local high school students. We're piloting a pre-apprenticeship program, which is like an apprenticeship readiness program with the high school students over at Nokomis Regional High. It's for 16 plus. It really gives a good understanding of all the trades, not just electrical. The 120-hour program is nationally accredited and allows students to learn about several different trades, helping them make their goals a reality. If they want to be a carpenter, we'll point them over here. If they want to be a general laborer, there's a program for that. Um, or what have you, like I said, welding or pipe fitting. Uh, we can help students uh, reach out uh, and get those contacts if that's where they want to go in that career. To learn more about the programs offered, go to IBEW1253.org. Well, this year's Northwoods Throwdown softball game is officially in the books. Maine and New Hampshire State game wardens faced off in a good old-fashioned game of softball last night. The game helped to raise money for Operation Game Thief, a nonprofit organization that pays reward money to people who report poaching and overfishing across the region. It's uh, very important to us that the public is the eyes and the ears for us because there's only a limited amount of game wardens and Marine Patrol officers that are able to do the job. And poaching to us is no different than stealing food off the shelf. 2,000 people were in attendance for the event. The Portland Sea Dogs hosted the game wardens at Hadlock Field. Maine won a wild one, 13 to 12 in extra innings. Looks like that was a fun time there. Well, don't go anywhere, folks, because when we return from break, We'll have the very latest on the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine. And updates from the White House, including Nancy Pelosi's planned trip to Asia, which has brought on threats from China. We'll be right back after this. Not all states have tax-free weekend. We thought you should too, so why wait to buy a mattress? Right now, get 15% off or get up to 60 months no interest. Yeah. Experience the difference at Jordan's. Is this the new phone? Yeah. With U.S. Cellular, I got to pick any phone that I wanted for free. And I was already a customer. Any brand? With any size? Mm -hmm. I got exactly what I wanted. Big screen, big storage. I cannot remember the last time I had so many different options. At U.S. Cellular, new and current customers can get any phone from any brand free. Are you actually texting them? I don't know. I just like thought I would just... U.S. Cellular, where every plan is price protected. You don't stay in business as long as Ravel's Garage, unless you're doing a lot of things right. Since 1946, Ravel's Garage in Dover Foxcroft has seen many customers drive off the lot completely satisfied, and they keep coming back. Why? Things like a wide selection of pre-owned cars, trucks, SUVs, and crossovers. Incredible customer service. A repair center that does it right the first time and on time. But the biggest reason, like new quality vehicles at a pre-owned price. So save yourself the hassle and save yourself some money. Rowell's Garage, Dover Foxcroft. Dude, can you believe we're graduating? And they helped us find a great job. 
Soon we'll be living the dream. Exactly. I'm incredibly grateful for Maine Job Corps. If it wasn't for them, I'd be working an entry-level job and barely making it. Let Team Maine Job Corps help find the career that's right for you. Call 561-8516. All the reader won't need a whole lot of money. It's Million Dollar Music Mondays. Are you guys ready to make some money? Let's do it. Don't forget the lyrics and beat Shazam show you the money. One. And if you want to test your music knowledge. You came up here with a hot cup of nothing. You can watch anytime. Million Dollar Music Mondays on Fox and watch anytime on these platforms. Many states have a tax-free weekend, but you can save too. Meet Bridget to find that perfect mattress and get 15% off or up to 60 months, no interest. Experience the difference at Jordan's. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. Thanks for staying with us, everyone. Russian President Vladimir Putin has officially designated the U.S. as Russia's top rival. Meanwhile, as Russia gains ground in eastern Ukraine, President Vladimir Zelensky is warning people in the eastern Donetsk region to evacuate. Fox's Alex Hogan is in Ukraine's capital with the latest. During the country's Navy parade in St. Petersburg, Russian President Vladimir Putin signed a declaration calling the U.S. one of its greatest rivals. At that celebration, Putin met with his Navy's top brass and touted the country would soon have a new hypersonic missile that it's been testing. Here in Ukraine, as Russian forces make new gains in the east, President Volodymyr Zelensky calling for a mandatory evacuation of the Donetsk region. Tonight, he urged his country not to give up. We have to hold on in the south in the east and everywhere. We have to hold on in defense, diplomacy, and politics to preserve our unity. In Odessa, ships full of grain remain docked. Grain shortages have already triggered a global food crisis. Now today, Zelensky says the country will likely only collect half of its usual harvest because of the war. To the east, farmers in the fields of Zaporizhia are harvesting their grain in self-made flak jackets as missiles soar overhead. Half of the region is currently occupied territory. And over in Kharkiv, brittle fields near the front lines are on fire from Russian shelling. Ukrainian service members condemning these attacks. Russia and Russian forces are to blame for the food crisis. They destroy our warehouses, our crops, our fields, our food, our animals. They destroy everything. Russia overnight unleashing heavy bombardment in the southern city of Mykolaiv. The mayor there says that this was the most intense attack since the start of the war. In Kyiv, Ukraine, Alex Hogan, Fox News. Well, two new causes for concern for the White House. President Biden testing positive for COVID once again. And House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's trip to Asia and China's threat to down the Speaker's plane should she travel to Taiwan. Speaker Pelosi tweeted overnight that she'll visit Singapore, Malaysia, South Korea and Japan. No mention of a possible trip to Taiwan, which sparked the ominous warnings from Beijing. Fox's Griff Jenkins is at the White House with the latest. President Biden is monitoring Speaker Pelosi's overseas trip while isolating in the residence here at the White House with his doctor, Kevin O'Connor, releasing a new letter saying that the president is feeling well and maintaining strict isolation measures, adding, quote, the president continues to be very specifically conscientious to protect any of the executive residents, White House, Secret Service, and other staff whose duties require any, albeit socially distanced, proximity to him. The White House also saying the president had six close contacts and none have tested positive. This comes as tensions are rising with China, with all eyes on a possible Pelosi stop in Taiwan, which is located right between the announced stops of Singapore and Malaysia in South Korea and Japan. But no Taiwan visit officially exists on her schedule, yet the prospect of it drawing criticism from Republicans. I don't know why uh, Speaker Pelosi uh, signaled her trip to Taiwan so far in advance to give the Chinese an opportunity to respond this way. Uh, it's outrageous that China would start threatening America just because the Speaker of the House and delegation would visit Taiwan. I don't think she can back down because that just gives China, you know, even more, even more uh, cause to continue their aggressive behavior. 
Meanwhile, the USS Ronald Reagan and its strike group has moved into the South China Sea with the Pentagon not commenting on ship movements. The administration has not explicitly advised Pelosi against a Taiwan stop, but they are reassuring Beijing that the administration's one China policy has not changed in any way. At the White House, Griff Jenkins, Fox News. Pope Francis leaving the door open to retirement, saying he has no immediate plans to step down, but admits he will need to scale back his travels. This comes after Francis spent a week in Canada using a wheelchair and walking cane to get around. Fox's Kitty Logan has more from London. The Pope has admitted that he's struggling to keep up his usual pace, telling reporters it might be time to slow down. The 85-year-old pontiff says his age and a knee injury is making travelling more challenging. He strained ligaments in his knee, which he says can't easily be operated on. He was seen using a wheelchair on his latest visit to Canada, which clearly hindered his ability to mix with crowds and to move around as freely as he normally would. The pontiff told reporters that this trip was a test to see how he gets on with that injury. But he did say he wants to continue to travel as much as he can, and he still hopes to visit Ukraine, Kazakhstan and South Sudan. He seems to be still in good spirits. He was able to travel to the edge of the Arctic on Friday to meet indigenous people there. But Pope Francis says he wouldn't entirely rule out resigning at some stage in future if that becomes necessary. In London, Kitty Logan, Fox News. Well, some sunscreen from a popular maker has been recalled over a potential cancer agent. Three batches of Banana Boat's hair and scalp sunscreen SPF 30 have been recalled by the parent company Edgewell Personnel Care. Tests test found that the product has trace amounts of benzene, a potential cancer agent. The recalled products have expiration dates of December 2022, February 2023, and April 2024. The company says it hasn't received any reports of adverse effects from the product. Banana Boat says it will offer reimbursements for the product. Okay, stay tuned because after this commercial break, we'll bring you all the latest news from the entertainment world. We'll be back after this. America's best bakers race to gather the clues and bake the mystery dessert. But did you make the right dessert? Crime Scene Kitchen, Tuesdays at 8 on Fox. Up in Smoke Fireworks is family owned with a huge selection including Brothers and Showtime, Time Bandit and Black Hat Brands. We will share our knowledge with you. Then go have a blast. blast. Up in Smoke Fireworks, 173 West Main Street, Searsport. Remember as a kid, if you could dream it, you could do it? Well, you still can. Now during the Ford Summer Supercharged Sales Event. And with great offers on select Ford vehicles, just move on. You'll not only bring back the fun, you'll supercharge it. So when the sun goes down, you'll just be getting started. Now place your order and lock in 2.9% APR for 60 months, plus $1,000 bonus cash on select F-150 trucks. Hey, it's Eric from Green Bear 420. We've been in business since 2010 and going strong, so stop in and check us out. We specialize in glass art by over 100 local artists and even have live glass blowing. Plus, we carry incense, novelties, t-shirts, and hard-to-find items. We have tons of local products for the tie-dye wearing person in your circle of friends. Come see us at 531 Moosehead Trail in Newport. And remember, Green Bear 420, it's not just a store, it's a lifestyle. Wherever you are, whether you're ready or not, it's coming with a purpose, with persistence, with the power to change the way you live. So you don't have to change the way you live. Generac Automatic Standby Generators. Control your power, control your life. Visit Generac.com. The ABC7 at Fox 22 Ultimate Backyard Barbecue Giveaway is back. Five lucky winners will take home $100 in quality meats from W.A. Bean & Sons. In addition, one lucky winner will win a grand prize of a brand new Weber gas grill. All you need to do to become a winner is stop by and fill out an entry form at Natural Living Center, featuring a huge selection of natural and organic groceries, health and beauty supplies, and more. Or Chapel Hill Floral, we're your neighborhood florist. Make your summer barbecue ultimate with ABC7 and Fox 22. 
Up in Smoke Fireworks is family owned with a huge selection including Brothers and Showtime, Time Bandit, and Black Hat brands. We will share our knowledge with you. Then go have a blast. blast. Up in Smoke Fireworks, 173 West Main Street, Searsport. Welcome back in, everyone. First, some sad news coming out of the entertainment world. Nichelle Nichols, the trailblazing actress known for her role as Lieutenant Nyota Uhura on the original Star Trek, has died. Her son, Kyle Johnson, making the announcement today on her Facebook page. According to Johnson, his mother succumbed to natural causes and passed away. Nichols was one of the first black women ever to play a main cast role on a television series. Her kiss with William Shatner is believed to be the first interracial kiss on American television. Nichols spent her later years promoting NASA and recruiting more women and minorities, including Sally Ride, the first American female astronaut. Nichols was 89 years old. Uh, quite the trailblazer there, someone who will be surely missed. The Albuquerque Convention Center pays homage to two of the most famous fictitious New Mexicans. Bronze statues of Breaking Bad characters Walter White and Jesse Pinkman shed light on the show's success both in Hollywood and in revitalizing New Mexico's film industry. We're, we're very excited. We're, we're just the idea of being able to stand here those many years ago and, and, and realize that those statues are going to stand there so many years from now is re remarkable to think about. And there's no, there's no preparation for saying you're getting a statue. <laughs> Albuquerque Mayor Tim Keller says the city was its own character in the show, which depicted in part the harsh reality of New Mexico's battle against drug addiction. Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, two of my favorite shows ever. Better Call Saul, only a few episodes left. Can't wait for that. And uh, check out that beard on Brian Cranston there. That's pretty cool. I need to grow one of those. I don't know if they'd let me have that, though, you know. Well, the place where Rose, Dorothy, Sophia, and Blanche sat around delivering famous quotes on a classic television show is the inspiration for a new pop-up restaurant. Starting in Beverly Hills and heading to more cities, we were able to take a look around the place with its Instagram-ready moments and variety of cheesecakes. Here's Fox's Ashley Dvorkin. Bring your pal, your confidant, throw a party and invite everyone you know. We are at the Golden Girls Kitchen in Beverly Hills and we're going to get a look around. This is Derek Berry of Bucket Listers and love the place. Thank you. So I'm going to ask you to give me a little bit of a tour. Yes. And I hope it includes drinks on the lanai. It will. Okay, fantastic. Let's go. The goal with this, this part of the room was that everyone, no matter where you were sat, you felt like you were at the classic table. Enjoy menu items like Sophia's lasagna, Blanche's Georgia-style cookie, and lots of cheesecake. Tickets are $39 to $55 on bucketlisters.com with an entree and dessert. Add on beverages, sides, and get ready for many photo op moments, including in that famous kitchen. The crew did such a good job with it, sourcing stuff like this phone and this painting that are identical to the show. And, you know, the cookie jar, the calendar, those things really matter. There's the Shady Pines Bar, Blanche's bedroom. I feel like this is a big social media moment. Oh my gosh, it's, it's probably the biggest outside of the kitchen. Thank you for being a friend. And don't forget to say thank you for being a friend with a pic on the lanai. The classic show is the latest pop culture inspiration for a bucket listers pop-up, a trend which keeps on gaining popularity. We have done uh, Saved by the Max, Good Burger, Breaking Bad, Peach Pit, and most recently one called Movies, which was a Jay and Silent Bob pop-up with Kevin Smith. It's interesting just to see how these things grow. You know, I remember when I started in 2016, there was only a couple of us in this territory, and there's a lot of people now. But to stay in it and relevant, I think you have to reinvent what a pop-up is. And for us, that's doing food and beverage. I mean, we just opened a real restaurant. After opening in Beverly Hills, July 30th, National Golden Girls Day, the experience goes to New York, Miami, San Francisco, and Chicago. Ashley Dvorkin, Fox News. Definitely one of the best sitcoms of all time right there. And I'd like to tell all of our viewers, thank you for being a friend. Appreciate you. Pop star Taylor Swift is getting swiftly mounting backlash over use of her private transportation mode. 
A marketing agency analyst company says critics are upset about air pollution caused by the use of her private jet, which has been used 170 times between January 1st and July 29th. Research showed Swift's jet racked up 22,000 minutes in the air for 8,240 metric tons of emissions. A Swift representative says Swift jet, Swiss jet is often loaned out to others. It is not just for her own use. All right, Chase Ropenak is in next with our full five-day forecast. All right, we got some pretty warm temperatures out there today, but just wait for what we got coming up next week. We'll have more of that coming right up. Make more good in the all-new Sportage X-Pro. Kia, movement that inspires. Why should your new floor come from Carpet One? Because we're passionate about the spaces our neighbors call home. We're part of your community, and we're also part of the world's largest cooperative of independently owned and operated flooring stores. So you can be sure you'll get great selection and outstanding value with every installation. Whether it's carpet, hardwood, tile, or luxury vinyl, our experts take the guesswork out of choosing the right floor. We're your local Carpet One Floor and Home, the one store for your perfect floor. Hey, Red Sox fans, you've got to play You Pick 'em Red Sox at FoxBangor.com. Local weekly winners receive prizes. Register now at FoxBangor.com. You Pick 'em Red Sox is sponsored by Twin City Tint in Brewer, Comfort Shoes and More in Newport, Saliba's Rug Cleaners in Bangor, and Twin City Tile in Brewer. Sheldon Cooper's ah! Theory of Relativity. All right. F is family. We have family business to discuss. We're getting a puppy? No. Then eh, I'm not sure I care. X is love. Sweet dreams. Love you. Love you too, because you're my mom. <laughs> Young Sheldon, five times a week. On Fox 22. Make more good in the all-new Sportage X-Pro. Kia, movement that inspires. Welcome to Fantasy Island. Shall we give it a try? It's the adventurous thing to do. What can the island do for you? Fantasy Island, Tuesday on Fox. Happy Sunday, everybody. We have some gorgeous weather out today with temperatures in the mid to low 80s. As we can see in Bangor, we're sitting at 84, closer to the coast, 82 in Bar Harbor, 81 in Rockland. So all around the state, we see some uh, just around the above average, or actually around average July temperatures. So it's uh, going to be a beautiful day for the outdoors. Looking at the UV forecast, though, make sure you have your hat, sunglasses, sunscreen, and find some shady areas because the burn time is going to be 15 minutes with a UV of 8. Looking into the temperature trend for this week, it's going to get hot. As we can see by Thursday, we have a high of 91. 10 degrees above the average for this time of year and then it will actually decline big time Friday drop another 10 degrees to the low 80s by Friday and Saturday looking at the muggy meter we see we're in the it's pretty humid for throughout the week it's going to take a, a drop into the low 50s and the dew points uh, Tuesday night and then it will ramp back up into the humid section uh, Wednesday through Friday so we'll get a little muggy out there Looking at the radar from afar, we can see that we just have some cloud cover passing uh, north and south, southwest of us. Uh, it's coming our way, so maybe get some clouds overnight. Other than that, no precipitation or anything to worry about. So we take a closer look, you can see those increased clouds coming in from the southwest. Other than that, like I said, no precipitation or thunderstorms to worry about coming our way. As we look into tomorrow, though, we do have some drizzle passing over and some verga maybe getting caught by the radar. Other than that, it should be a pretty uh, clear day from precipitation, no rain to worry about tomorrow. As we go into the sea surface temperatures, should be a good day to swim. The uh, Massachusetts Bay is warming up, 71 degrees, and then 66 more closer as we get to Maine. So if you're out and about and you want to go swimming, should be a good day for that. As we go into the wind, uh, wind speeds here, we can see that closer to the coastline, we have the winds ramping up right now, 14 miles per hour by Macias, and then as we go by Bar Harbor, 10 miles per hour right now. Seems to be pretty calm throughout the rest of the state of Maine, so it's going to be a beautiful day as, as we go into the next week. 
Looking into tonight's forecast, it's a low of 63. Mostly cloudy skies out there with some uh, breezy winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour from the southwest. Going into tomorrow's forecast, we have a high of 88. It'll be partly cloudy out there with some more breezy winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour from the south. Going into your extended forecast, we can see we have a low of 65 on Monday, a thunderstorm chance with a high of 84 on Tuesday, mostly sunny Wednesday, another slight thunderstorm chance on Thursday with that high of 91, and then Friday we'll have another rain chance with a high of 81. With a high of 81. Dylan? All right, thanks for that, Chase. Well, tonight the sports world is mourning the passing of Boston Celtics legend and basketball Hall of Famer Bill Russell. Russell was the unquestioned leader of the Celtics during an unparalleled dynasty run of 11 NBA championships in the 50s and 60s. He was also an outspoken civil rights advocate throughout his career. Here's Greg Wolf on the life and times of Bill Russell. If one word could describe Bill Russell, it is this. Winner. 11 NBA championships in 13 years. It's a record unmatched in the history of American team sports. It's all over. The Boston Celtics are the world champion. When the Celtics drafted Russell, he was already a two-time NCAA champion and Olympic gold medalist. His winning continued immediately. And then, of course, Russ joined us in December, and uh, that was all she wrote, 11 championships in 13 years. So. Russell also racked up five most valuable player awards, was a five-time rebounding champion, and was named an all-star 12 times. When Red Auerbach retired as Celtics coach in 1966, Russell took over as a player coach. It was the first time an African-American would be the head coach of a major American sports team. Can you do the job impartially without any racial prejudice in reverse? Yes. Born in strictly segregated Louisiana in 1934, he remained forcefully engaged in confronting what he saw as a country too often plagued by racism and unfair dealings to those in the minority. Everyone wants to be treated civilly and with respect. No more, no less. Bill Russell was elected to the Basketball Hall of Fame in 1975, and the NBA Finals MVP trophy is named in his honor. I always said that when I left the Celtics, I could not go to heaven because every step down. Force Entertainment and Kick Axe Pub and Club present Fiesta Fridays. Every Friday, get two tacos and a margarita, just $5.95. Arriba! G Force Entertainment, bringing great food and a variety of entertainment to the Bangor Mall. Chevy Blazer. That's our next SUV. I love that Equinox. That's our next SUV. Nice Trailblazer. It was love at first sight. What? The Chevy family of SUVs find new options, find new roads. New SUVs are arriving daily at your main Chevy dealers, so secure yours today. Visit your main Chevy dealer. It takes all types to play Family Feud, but tell it all. Name something Grandma wears and might also fit Grandpa. Yeah, I know my grandma used to have a beard. The Spicy Seniors. Hey, Eddie, why they call you Fast Eddie? Because he made me so happy so fast. Whoa! Steve, it was a triple and a home run, baby. <laughs> See who shows up all season on Family Feud. Weeknights at 7 on Fox 22. 
G-Force Entertainment and kick Axe Pub and Club present Fiesta Fridays. Every Friday, get two tacos and a margarita, just $5.95. Arriba! G-Force Entertainment, bringing great food and a variety of entertainment to the Bangor Mall. I did what I did to save my son. But this is not who I am. The Cleaning Lady. Watch the entire first season before new episodes this fall. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. This summer, Maine United became the first team from the state to participate in the Nike EYBL. And they showed what Maine is made of on the nation's biggest stage. This summer, nine kids from Maine put on a show on the nation's biggest youth basketball stage. You don't really hear a team from Maine making a lot of, you know, splash in the national scene. Most of the guys on Maine United have been sharing the floor since elementary school. Everybody has each other's backs, and that's kind of like our team motto is that if one goes, we all go, so it's just doing everything together. I mean, I'd say we're not even, we're not really a team, we're kind of just a family. I mean, we spend a lot of time off the court, too. We all have that connection, that bond, and to be able to go in there as brothers and be on the biggest stage is just a, a magical. And this summer, they became the first ever team from Maine to participate in the Nike Elite Youth Basketball League. The first session, we really didn't know what to think. We didn't really know what the competition was going to be like. We were nervous, obviously. We hadn't played um, the UIBL competition before. We didn't know what it was going to hold, but we were confident. We knew that um, if we went out there and played like ourselves and played with a little bit of confidence, then we get it done. So. After sweeping their first session and going 3-1 and one in their next, the boys qualified for Peach Jam the most prestigious grassroots tournament in the country. Growing up, I used to watch a lot of like, highlight tapes on YouTube, and I used, I used to love watching the Peach Jam. And, I mean, I, I never thought I'd be playing here and playing on the Nike circuit, so it was just really mind-blowing to you know, have your dreams come true. I remember watching all, like, um, all the older people go through, and be like, wow, Peach Jam, and then when, when we heard that we were going to be there, it was just crazy. And it's safe to say, they showed off what Maine is made of. We were just trying to play our best basketball because we were there, trying to make a name for ourselves. With all of their success, coming back to the work they all put in up in VZ, Maine. Just anything that we're doing in game is coming from all the hard work, sweat, and uh, hours that come from this gym. So. We, we're always in here grinding. When we're not in here. Like you said, we're playing somewhere. So Matt's done a great job with us. We come in here probably three or four times a week just to... Uh, you know, we really just like to get better at basketball. That's, that's kind of the goal. We all want to play college basketball. So I think we all understand the grind that it takes, and we're all willing to put in the work. It was a blast covering them all summer, wishing everybody on that team luck in whatever their next adventure is. All right, that'll do it for me up here. Patriots just wrapped up their first week of training camp, so Dylan Holloway is waiting for me on the couch for some football talk. All right, everyone, welcome into Double Take. I am Dylan Holloway. Alongside me, Tyler Cruz, of course. We talked some baseball last time, this time some NFL. Fans want to know. Patriots fans want to know. The season is just right around the corner. We have some burning questions to Let's do hear with the New England Patriots. Let's hear them. First off, Mac Jones, oh. second-year quarterback, right? A lot of people are hoping he takes that jump to the next level to the next, you know, uh, echelon of NFL quarterbacks, like you, I guess you could say. What's your take on Mac Jones? How are you feeling about Mac entering this next NFL season? I think Mac's going to take a huge year one to year two jump, everybody. I mean, he's already worked on his body. You see him coming in looking like a completely different person before camp even started, right? We are one week into camp. Before they even started, Belichick came out with some high praise on Mac Jones. I think he is going to be... One of the bright spots of the Patriots this year, not to say there aren't going to be a lot of bright spots, but I think people are going to like what they see from Mac Jones this year. That's just my opinion. I am very high on the guy. Very high on Mac Jones, as a lot of us are, right? So, something else. So, Bill, Bel Bill Belichick, excuse me, head coach Bill Belichick. I should get that guy's name right. He has <laughs> not up here. Yeah, he has not named an offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator yet. Should we, should we be worried about that? Is that weird? Does that matter? People are talking about it, though. What's your take on this? I think that's Boston Sports Radio talk right there, saying that Bill's trying to, I don't know, do something different, trying too hard. I don't think it matters. I really don't think it means anything. I mean, there's going to be... There's a lot that goes into calling a plays and setting up the offensive scheme and the defensive scheme for the week that 
it's really not just one person's job whether you have a coordinator title or not. It's not really just one person's job. You've got a great, great group of minds around the guys. Um, you got Patricia, I heard, talking to Mac Jones, helping him read defenses. The defensive, uh, old defensive coordinator before he took that Lions job, talking to Mac, helping him read defenses. That's something they did with Brady early on in his career. So, I mean, I think you've got a great group of minds around your locker room. It doesn't really matter who's offensive coordinator, who's defensive coordinator, who's the sole guy, the fall guy, really, for the play calling. I don't think it matters. Yeah, Bill Belichick, obviously, you know, not a guy for labels, it seems like, on this not. one. <laughs> so we're going to see how that all works out, though. But I, I think we can trust Bill Belichick, right? If there's anything we've learned in Bill We Trust, I'm a big in Bill We Trust guy. I know that kind of school of thought is going out the window a little bit, but I'm still a big in Bill We Trust guy. Yeah, in Bill We Trust, of course. So a lot of new faces on the Patriots, so one of them, wide receiver, Devontae Parker. How yeah. excited are oh. you to see this guy in a Patriots uniform. He is. I remember watching him. It was the year that Gilmore won Defensive Player of the Year, and Parker absolutely lit him up. I think it's like 11 catches, over 100 yards, just a great game for Parker. While he was on the Dolphins, usually you don't see Belichick make these cross-division trades, right? I mean, it's a trade with a division rival. I think it's very interesting to watch. I think Parker's got some of the best hands in the league. He's a great route runner. He's already working well with Jones. I mean, it's only been a couple days, but we've seen that he's working well with Mac Jones so far in training camp. I'm excited for Parker. Yeah, I think we all are. A new weapon for Mac Jones yep. hopefully helps him take that next step, as we talked about. Yep. So uh, the Patriots, though, some people have them missing the playoffs in their predictions, right? Some people Adam do. Shine, NFL analyst, he has them 14th in the AFC Conference. 14th, Tyler. What is this team's ceiling? Do you think it's possible they missed the playoffs with Bill Belichick under uh, leading the way? See, I have them. My expectation of this team, they'll probably be a wild card team again. I don't think they're as good as the Buffalo Bills. I think Josh Allen's the best quarterback in the AFC East. I don't think they're at that level yet. I think Miami's going to be very good as well. But the Patriots are a quarterback team. They should be in the playoffs. They won't be on the bottom of the AFC East like some people are projecting. I do think, I mean, while we talked about Devontae Parker, while we've talked about Mac Jones, I think it's still going to be a defensive team, right? I think the Patriots are going to be a, t uh, be a team that beats you with their defense, but the offense is going to take a jump this year to complement them. I'm excited for week one. September 11th, we're like 43 days away. I'm counting down the days. I'm buying my fantasy football magazines. I am excited for football season, Dylan. As we all are. You know, it's hard to imagine. I can't imagine the Patriots missing the playoffs. It, it just doesn't seem I don't think it's happened in my lifetime. And maybe the Matt Castle year. Yeah, I think that's the one year, right? Yep. The Matt Castle year. But this is not the Matt Castle year. This is now <laughs> the Mac Jones era. And I'm excited. I know Tyler's excited. And I want to thank you all for tuning in for Double Take. We'll see you next time. That'll be it for sports. We'll be right back after this. Many states have a tax-free weekend. Well, we thought you should save, too. Right now, get 15% off everything. Or get up to 60 months, no interest. Experience the difference at Jordan's. Oh, great. My wireless bill just went up. Hmm. Should have gone with U.S. Cellular. They aren't raising prices on any of their plans. Seriously? Yeah, my price won't increase. Well, that is refreshing. I feel like everywhere you turn these days, prices are going up. Supply chain got us, too. Don't get me started on the overhead cost. At U.S. Cellular, every plan for everyone is price protected. You know, I respect a female entrepreneur. U.S. Cellular, where every plan is price protected. Do you struggle to open or close your windows? Are they drafty or leaky? Are you constantly adjusting your thermostat only to have your energy bill skyrocket? If you're nodding your head yes, Renewal by Anderson is your best solution. They custom build and install weather-tight replacement windows and back them with a generous, fully transferable limited warranty. Call now to schedule your free design consultation. Plus, take advantage of this limited time offer with incredible savings and attractive financing. Don't miss out. Call Renewal by Anderson today. Check one, check two. The store's appearance may have changed throughout the years, but its dedication to our community and families has not wavered. We will still welcome you with a smile and top-notch service. If you need coffee, check. Tasty treats. Check. Freshly made pizza. Check. Or wine and spirits. Check. Stop by and fill up your tank and check us out. We are the first family of country music. Protect the legacy no matter what happens. Can hold my body down. Your mama didn't become an icon by playing nice. You don't think I can continue her legacy? Just watch. <laughs> 
This family's hanging on to a lot of secrets. You are scared of the truth. Never a dull moment. no grave can hold my body down. Many states have a tax-free weekend, so we got to thinking, why wait when you can save even more? Right now, get 15% off everything or get up to 60 months no interest. Experience the difference at Jordan's. Sign up for You Pick 'em Red Sox at foxbangor.com. Pick who you think is going to win and compete against other fans for prizes. Thanks for staying up with us tonight, everyone. Divers delighted a crowd of more than 1,000 people as they plunged 75 feet from the historic Old Bridge in Mostar, Bosnia today. They landed in the cold, fast-moving Neretva River. Spectators cheered all those taking part in the southern Bosnian city's annual competition. The landmark bridge is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Organizers say this is the 456th time the contest has been held at the Old Bridge, which was originally built by the Ottomans in 1566. It was destroyed during Bosnia's war that lasted from 1992 to 1995, but was painstakingly rebuilt after the conflict ended. That's pretty cool. You know, I don't know if I'd, uh, I don't know what would be scarier, me jumping off the bridge or me being the, the guy in the canoe with people falling down from all that. You know, my luck, I'd get hit in the head or something, but more power to them. That's pretty neat. Well, at least one store in New York City is locking up everyday food items, like spam, that is. It's one step the store is taking to prevent the food from being stolen. Each container of spam is locked in an anti-theft case that can only be opened by employees. Other food, including cans of tuna, were also reportedly locked in the cases. Employees tell the New York Post that theft at the store has risen over the last two years. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not every day that you see spam locked in an electronic case like that, like it's a, an expensive video game or something. But, I mean, you know, if they're taking spam, I guess you got a desperate times call for desperate measures there. But, yeah. Well, another meat story here. For many meat lovers, bacon rules. And if you're the chosen one, you could be the ruler of a city where bacon is king. Vernon, Texas, the home of Wright Brand Bacon, will rename itself Bacon City, USA, on September 16th and 17th to celebrate Wright's 100th anniversary. And you might get elected if you put your name on the ballot, which is Wright's mayor of Bacon City. Excuse me. Bacon City website and showing your qualifications in a video. You won't get Bacon Force One to fly on, since pigs can't fly, of course, but you can win a trip to the festivities and get free bacon for life. A little hard for me to get through that read there, seeing all that bacon, you know, getting me hungry. You know, it'd be kind of cool to be like the mayor of Bacon City, but I think bacon for life is probably the last thing that I need. I'm trying to cut down on the bacon, not, you know, eat a whole bunch more, but, you know. Hopefully somebody out there uh, gets crowned bacon mayor and, uh, you know, uh, takes rain for a couple of days. <laughs> it's an interesting story there. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. We appreciate you tuning in, and we'll see you right back here next time. Good night, everybody. I've never really been offered a beauty campaign when I was in my 20s or my 30s or my 40s.